Hi there, once again, welcome to Adutech. In today's tutorial, we're going to build a very simple calculator in PHP. We will apply a bit of styling to our design. So at the end of the day, we're going to get this. So we'll be able to we'll be able to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So you just have to enter your first number and then also provide your second number. And then you and you get the result at this column. We've actually disabled the result column, okay? Because we don't want any this figure will go to be automatically generated. When when you click on the submit button, either add or whatever, it's going to be generated over it, so you don't need to add anything over it. So if I add the two numbers and I click on either subtract, it's going to give me the results. I can subtract 7 from 90. If I want to multiply the two, I can do that. And if I want to divide the two, I can also do that as well. So this is what we're going to build in this tutorial. So stay tuned and remember to subscribe if you are new to this channel. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell. So you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. So let's see how we're going to build it. Remember, we are using PHP, and PHP stands for Hypertech Preprocessor. And we definitely need a server in order to run this program. So we first need to install a server. And in this case, you can use either a WAMP server or a use ZAMP. So any of them will work for you. So if you can see over here, I'm using I'm using a warm server and already my services are online that is why my button has changed to green so we am using a warm server and you can use any of them you can download warm and then install and then you can do that so let's see how we're going to create this we first need to make sure we have our working folder and I'm going to build everything using VSC code editor so that is my my previous project I've built the project I've worked on but we're going to build everything from scratch and before we do that we first need to go to our drive C so we're going to go to our drive C so I'm going to go to my drive C and then we'll locate our WAMP once you install WAMP it will give you a folder here called the WAMP64 so I open that WAMP folder our working folder is going to be within a www dot so the www dot open that folder and then we'll create a folder here so let's create a folder inside and let's call our folder let's call it short project so I'm just going to type a short pro so that's the folder we're going to work with so we're going to work with a short pro and then we'll come back to our text editor that's the vsc code editor and we're going to open that folder and then we can work with that folder so i'll go to my file and then go to open folder and i'm going to select that folder from my directory that is the c drive the php and then ww folder so i'll select that pro and then i'll select that folder and then open that folder so that is the folder we're going to work with and we're going to have just two files within that folder we're going to have just two files within this folder so this is the folder we have here the short pro so we're going to create our first our first value so first we need to create our first file over which is going to be index our index page so because we are working with php the extension is going to be dot php and we're also going to add and we're also going to add another folder called star that is going to add styling to our project so let's also add another folder called what star.css so these are the two files we're going to work with so we're going to start so let's start building this project and let's look at what we're going to need in this particular project we first need to generate our HTML template and let me show you how we can access this now so in our browser now we just have to open our browser let me open a new tab and in order to access what the folder we've created just type localhost type localhost this way when you type localhost in your browser it will open this page you can see our folder can be identified over here it's showing other it's showing under our project so we just have to type slash slash so the look at who slash our project that's going to be short pro that's the name of our product our project so that's the name of our project and then right now we don't have anything we are seeing empty page so when we start working everything will now appear on this page we just have to be keep reloading and then we we'll see our project on this page so let's start working on our project and then see what is going to happen so I'm going to generate HTML, a template, and then we can build our skeleton, and then we can also work with our PHP. So we first need to, if you use VLC code 
if you have if you have using before it's easily to generate a template you can just press shift and then the exclamation sign or one on your keyboard and it will give you this option and then you can hit the tab key so this will generate HTML template for you this week. All we need to do is to give a heading. So we're going to build a calculator. So let's say calculator. Okay. And because we're going to use CSS, we definitely need to link our CSS in our header. Okay. We are using external CSS. We need to link it. So we're going to say, I'm just going to type a shortcut. Just select this. And then the name of our file and what is being generated for us is the same so the name of our file is star.css if it's a different name you use you can easily replace that name over here, the reference and it's in the same folder as our index file so we don't have any problem with that so let's just leave it as it is so now we're going to start and then let's see how we can build what exactly we want to do so we first need to create a form and i'm going to create a division let me go to create a container to handle everything so i'm going to say div and I'm going to first give a container a name. Okay, I'm going to give it a class. A class. And I'm going to call that class container. Okay. So within this class, we're going to create our form. And before our form, if you look at our final project here, before our form, I have this line around is called a field set. And also have some legend over here. So before that, I'm going to create a field set over here over here and then within my field set I'll first add a legend and I'll explain that so the legend the legend is what we have over here that I entered enter your details so this is where we have the legend and this round the angle around is what we call the field set so I'm going to type in enter your details as we have over here, enter okay so this is what we have if you save everything you go to your browser you can just your new project you can just load it in so if you have everything set and you load this you should be getting your legend your field set everything set up for you as we are expecting so we can see our enter we can see enter your details and then a field set is displaying over here but we basically need to create a form now and then the form is going to be within our field set so we're going to see form and then there's going to be action so the action simply means that when you click on the submit button where is our document going to be processed and in this case we're going to process it in the same index.php so we can just put it over this index.php so we're going to process it at the same place like this and then the method we're going to use is going to use we're going to use what post method okay we're going to use post so we're going to use post method to submit our form and if you see our final project we see our final project we basically have the number one number two and then our results so we're basically going to create label for that so our first label is going to be label so the label is going to be for our first number so let me say number one and over here i'm going to type number one and then i'm not going to put the input i'm going to create the input for the first number so i'll say input and that input is going to be input is going to be so the, this input is going to be for the first number so i'm going to say name so we're going to use this name in our php so it's very, very important so i'm just going to say number one okay so that is basically our first input and we go back to load this page this should this should appear here on our page so we can see we now have our first field over here we now have our first field that is number one so we just go ahead and then create the number two and then also get our results we basically don't need to type in everything we just have to copy this and then paste it so, but we have to bring a couple of breaks so that they will not they will not be on the same line so i'll add just two breaks over here. and what i need to do i'll just copy the label everything like this Control D or just copy and paste down here, and I will change this one to what number two, and here is going to be what number two, and then let's check this one again. 
so you can see we have our second number as well so the last one we need is also going to the last one we need is to have what our submit our results after our result then we can have our buttons okay so let's go and add the last one so we we'll copy the same thing copy and then paste so i'm going to change this the value to what results and here it's not going to be num2 by what results okay and then here is going to be what results okay so that is all we need for now but we're going to do some changes for this particular field that is the our result field you can see we can click and then enter values within our our fields okay if you click is active the result field is also active but we are not expecting anyone to enter anything at the result field whatever we add at number one number two when you calculate it the number one num number two whatever we add at number one and number two once we hit the like uh, we have hit our corresponding button then it should give us the result so the result over here shouldn't be tempted with okay nobody should no, do any modification to the result so if you check over here our final project the result column is disabled so you can't do any changes so we basically need to do that over here in order to do that we just have to go back to our code and then after results let's just type in what disabled and this simple code will just disable our result field anytime we we apply or anytime we send our mouse over there that particular field will not be accessible so you can see the result field now is not accessible okay i just want to position everything i'm doing in the middle over here so i'm going to add a bit of css i want to position everything in the middle over here so i'll go back to my project go to my css folder go to my css file and then type in container the container i use a class for my container over here class so i have to select it in that way so i'm going to say dot so you want to select a container a class you use so use a dot so container so when i do this what i need to do is that i want to give it a weight so i'll give it a weight of i'll give it a weight of 600 pesos and after that i'm going to give it a margin and this margin i just want to give 100 top bottom and then left and right to be auto so we have to do it this way and if i go back to my project if i reload this it should automatically send type written in the middle for me so this is actually what we want and i'm okay with that so our css basically improve on our code the next thing we want to do is also to add our buttons then we can continue we'll be adding more of css to this remember to subscribe and also don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any the like button so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials so now that we have everything set up let's now create our buttons so we'll go back to our php and then after the results we're going to add our buttons so we're going to say input and this is going to be submit And what we're going to do is that we're also going to give it a name and they both going to have the same name let's call it operation and we're going to give it a value and that value is going to be so the first one we'll call it addition okay so that is all we need for this dish we're going to have four different buttons so now that i have my first one i'll just duplicate it four times and then i'll maintain everything as it is but i'll change the value over here so basically i want to make my first value the first one caps and this is going to be multiplication okay and then this is going to be subtraction and the last one is going to be division so this is all we want up to this stage 
we can reload this and see how it's going to be okay so now we have our buttons set now and we are good to go i believe you enjoyed this video up to this stage remember to hit the like button and also share with friends so now that we have everything up to this stage we just have to go ahead and then apply some css then we can go to the php part okay we can go with, with the php part. I, but i believe it will be nice if we work with our php before we do the styling so let's go back and then apply our php to this and then once everything is working then we will do a bit of styling to our project then we are done so we'll go back and then we now apply our php so i'll go to the top here let me move everything down and then let me just include php over here so in order to use your php in your project just start with the php and then also end with question mark and then this so we first need to make sure that anyone using our application actually click on what the submit or click on any of our buttons so we first need to say if let's say if is set if it's set this way so we're going to say we are using our post keyword so dollar underscore post so we're going to check if indeed the person click on our button so we when the, our button is having a name operation so they are all having operation we just copy the name operation and then that operation will be here so if, if indeed our button is clicked then we can create a variable to store everything so we can say we can store this value any value that is entered we can store it so we can have num1 is equal to we can post that so you're going to be dollar underscore post and then this is going to be so this first one is going to be what num1 remember we use this name for our first number so that is the name we are using so that's the same thing we are repeating over we are calling it by name and we need to end this application we end we need to end this statement with a semicolon because we are doing we are using php i'm just going to duplicate this twice and then change this one to what num2 and i will change this one to what, num2 as well and this is going to be our operation so i'm just say op and over here the operation over here we have over with our operation over here is what the full name is what operation so i'm just going to put it over there so i'm going to say operation okay so we are done with this part after all this is done the next thing we need to do is just we need to switch we want to use this switch statement to move through our applications a remember loop we use loop to run through application once our condition is true it's continuous it's going to continue to run and all that but in this case we want to switch between our code because we know the number of times this is going to run okay we know the values we are dealing with so we're going to say switch and so we are switching between our operators so based on operator the person is going to select that we know what to do so we're going to use a switch so this is going to be operator once we select this let's now try using our operators now so i'm going to say the first case with our first case our first case is what if we check our value of our first case is addition so our first case here is addition and if it's addition let's bring colon over here then we're going to say our result remember we have our result field So this is our results field. If we come back to our main project, this is our results field. So we're going to say if the switch statement selected is addition, then that is a value. If it's addition, then what we're going to do is that we're going to add the first number and then the second number. So we're going to say number one plus what num what num two, and then we we'll end this. And we'll bring break statement break is very important in the switch statement this helps a lot because once we get our result the code no need to do not 
once you get what you have in the code should stop running it shouldn't continue to the next line again that's why we have the break statement so if addition is selected then the statement will end over here okay and i will just duplicate this four more times for all so the next one is going to be what multiplication so you have multiplication here just just copy so that we don't have any mistake in our typing so we'll paste this here if it's multiplication then we we'll change here to what multiplication okay the next one is what subtraction because of spelling mistake i'm just trying to avoid that so that we don't type anything wrong so i just copy and paste this and then if it's subtraction then we have to bring the subtraction over here. the last one is division so i just copy this as well if it's division then we we'll divide okay so this is all we need up to this stage so we can go ahead and then test this and see let's go ahead and then refresh this i just hope we will not get any error and we'll enter a number here and we'll enter another number here and then we have to display result in order to get a result in this field we have to do some few modification to our code so we just have to identify our result field this is our result field so in order to do that we need to add a value so let's try and add a value over here and in this value we can't we're going to use a php short code so i'm going to type this in, in two ways and then i'll explain it we can just say we want to echo the result so we can say php echo and then our result here we'll echo our result here and then bring the statement so basically this is what we are doing we just this we just echo this and okay So let's go back to our So you can see when we enter this we click on addition it's working but the values but the values for one number one and number two quickly disappeared but we want to keep those values and then we can if we want to apply mod mod multiplication subtraction and division we can do that so in order for us to do that i initially made a short mistake over here by omitting my question mark over that is why i'm having that challenge so this actually is a very long code and we can easily we can easily write this in a short way so i'm going to clear the echo and then just leave it this way so when we keep this one very short all we need to do is uh, copy this okay basically i'm going to copy everything and then the result for the num one i'm going to paste it but i'll change my result to what num one and then i'll come to num2 as well and then change this one to what num2 so basically we created a variable to store those two numbers so we have num1 num2 that is the same thing i'm calling over so anytime we submit to keep the results in our test field it will not disappear so let me reload this and then we can test our application and then see okay you can see i still have this application these numbers available over here so any number i'm going to select any number i'm going to enter after clicking on any of the buttons it will still be there it will not vanish so let me click on addition it will give me the addition of these two numbers but it will still keep my figures so you can see i still keep them over there if i click on multiplication it will give me the results of the multiplication of the two numbers and it will still keep my values over there and i can also subtract subtract subtraction is working and i'll also go for division you can see everything is working up to this stage if you're happy up to this stage just keep
hit the like button and then continue to enjoy this tutorial so we've gotten this project working finally but we can see with some colors to make it more attractive so in this case we just going to apply some few colors to this so I first want to add a border a border to my legend okay first let's add a background color to our field set and already we know what a field set is the field set is created over here and is basically the rectangle it's basically the rectangle around our entire project so we go to css we just target our field set remember we are not using class or id so we just have to call it by name so we just say field set this way and then we can say border radius i just want to apply some border border radius to it and i'll give a border radius of 10 pesos okay and also give it a background color so i'll say background color so this background color is going to be let's say aqua let's go back and then load our project So you can see we have our nice background color for this project the result column has been disabled so let's also you can see the border radius make the edges look curvy and then we also need to start our legend so let's target our legend as well and we'll come down here and then say what legend and i need to give it a border So I'm going to give a border of two pixels. I say solid gray. So I'm just going to give a gray color, and I'll give it a radius as well. So let me see border radius. I'm also give a border radius with a say among twenty pixels, and I want to give my text a bit of space or so add a bit of padding to that i'll give a padding of five pixels and i think the full set also needs some padding padding of 10 pixels will be okay and then we can go back and then reload what we've done okay so everything is working up to this stage just that we need to give a background color for our legend and i'm going to give the same background color so i just need to copy the same for our field set let me just copy the same for field set and then paste it over here okay so it will appear as we want so you can use any color you want up to this stage so you can see what we have up to this stage even though my initial project i use a different color for both it's the same process any color you want to use is going to work our project the code we enter will not will not be affected anything we add is basically going to work for us you can add we can multiply we can subtract and then we can divide okay so everything is working now let's add some changes to our buttons let's add some colors to them and then let's make them stand out in this project in order for us to do that we're just going to add some ids to our we can add ids to our buttons so i prefer to give them different colors so i'll give a separate id so let me say add and just copy this id now call this one subtract or this mode so i'm gonna say mode then i'll come down here and then give it give this one sub and this one will be what division so i just call it div this way even though in my final project i use the same color for the buttons this new project the one we are working on i'm just going to give them different colors because because they are performing a different function i will just give them a different color so i'm not going to target this particular ids individually and then do modification to it so i'll go back to our css and then we first target with id to select an id 
or to target an ID, use the hash keyword. So we're going to say hash and we'll say what? Mod. That's the first. Okay, the first one is add. And I believe I use small letters for them. Yeah, I use small letters for them. So I'll do them as it is. So the first one, I'm just going to give a small pattern, pattern of five pieces for each. And I'll give it a background color. I'll give it a background color of let me say hot pink for the first one and you can see when we move our cursor to the buttons I prefer it to show as a hand symbol which indicate that it's a link but this one is not showing that way so let's first also do that so I'm going to say cursor pointer so when I do it this way it will make us Kessa appear as a pointer. So this is our final project. Let me reload this again. I'll reload this and you can see we have our color showing over here. It's showing that we've actually changed the color for this and you can see the Kessa is also showing as a pointer and I'm going to apply some bit of radius to it. I'll add some radius to it. So I'll say radius, border radius, sorry. So I'll say border radius. So border radius, I'll just give it, I'll just give it seven pixels. Okay, so let me reload project again. Okay, so this is working for us. If we don't even need the solid border, we can easily turn them off but let's keep it as it is up to this stage and then we'll just do the same for the rest we don't need to be writing the entire code let's just copy everything paste it three more times and then instead of add we're going to change it towards mode and then the color here we just need to change it to a different color of our choice okay and then this is going to be what sub and then i'm just going to change this to so i'm going to change this color and then the last one is div div and i'm also going to change this color to something else okay so i've changed the color for the bag the button for every background so let me reload this let me reload remember to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos so you can see the text and everything is appearing over here but yes that my colors are not really good and my right tab is not visible if you have that challenge you can just change the color of the right tabs okay so for instance, this is very dark red and I can see color. I can just give a white color for that. Just give a white color for that. So when I go back and I reload this, I can see this will change to white and it will appear better to be visible. So if you want to change it for the rest, you can do that. Maybe due to uniformity, you can just do it for the rest. So our project is actually complete now and we can test it for the last time subtract which is page six division you can see everything is working up to this stage thank you so much for watching my tutorial up to this stage remember to subscribe and don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming video i have project based tutorials coming up on this channel in order not to miss any of this remember to always subscribe and hit my and hit the like button if you enjoyed this tutorial so like come your way another time stay tuned and also keep visiting my channel and support my channel by sharing this video with friends so like come your way another time bye bye